Engineer Man here. Time to compile some open source software manually. No time to waste. Let's jump in. Today, difficulty is easy. We're going to talk about what is compiling, why would you need to compile, what do you need to compile, and then we're going to do some compiling. So first, what is compiling? Compiling is a usually a two-stage process. The first stage is taking all of your source code and converting it to executables. And the second stage is taking all those executables and installing them to the proper location in your computer. Why would you need to comp why would you need to compile versus just installing? That would be a few reasons. These are the top three. Software doesn't have packages, meaning you can't just put it right on your computer. The software doesn't distribute binaries, meaning the people that distribute the software don't actually give you the executables. And finally, the software may have packages, but they're just old and you want a better version. What do you need to compile? You're going to usually need things like GCC and Make. And if you're on Ubuntu, you can just do app get install build essential. If you're on RHEL or CentOS, you can do yum group install development tools. Other flavors of Linux will have different ways of doing things. If you're on Mac, you'll need GCC. And let's do some compiling. So today I chose Git to do some compiling on. So we're on Git. They have all the ways you can install Git, but we're going to do the compilation. So we're going to go here. We're going to download the source directly. We'll just download the latest version, which is 2.9.4. We'll take the gzipped version. We'll download that into our folder here. Okay, we got it. We'll extract that file. See it inside there. The first thing I do when I go to compile something is I see if it has an install, an install document, and I'll open that up. So here it says get installation. Normally you can just do make followed by make install, which is true, but what I want to do is I want to put it in slash user. That way it's a global install. And usually you're going to see a configuration file, so I'm going to use this alternate method. So I'm going to basically copy that. So the first thing I need to do is I need to do make configure. What this is going to do is it's going to generate configuration file. Next thing I need to do is run that configuration and specify a prefix of user. So I'll do configure prefix equals user and it's going to do a lot of pre-checking sometimes you get an error during the step and that will usually happen if you're missing missing some program you need to finish the compilation process everything finished fine so we'll look inside our file again now we're going to do just make all so we do make all now it's converting the actual files into basically object files and this is going way too slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dash J and 32. I'm running on a 32 core Dell PowerEdge. So you'll see it's going to go a lot faster. And to the right, you'll see all the CPU usage. So we'll compile that a lot faster. Ordinarily, if you're on a single core machine and you don't specify a dash J, that could take up to probably four minutes. So now finally the last step, according to their documents, is run make install. And what this is going to do is it's going to take all those files and put them into the proper folders, in this case, uh, user bin. So do make install. All done. We'll do git dash dash version. And we'll see we now have git 9 point, I'm sorry, 2.9.4. And then we'll do a which git. And it says it's in user bin git, which is exactly where I wanted it. And that's it. Hopefully everyone learned a little bit. If I forgot to cover something or you'd like to learn more or you'd like to request a tutorial, post a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos. See you next time.